This is just pretty much garbage on the radar now in the metro area, so we don't have a problem just yet. And you can see that when we go back and look here at what's going on uh, with the radar. So it's not a real problem just yet. We'll flip it back over to the radar that you're used to seeing around here. And there are warnings, uh, again, up to the north, uh, but not in the immediate metro area right now. We'll slide this down a little bit uh, so you can see what we're talking about. Oops, got a box on there. Sorry about that. Uh, we'll slide it around here and show you what's happening in the area. So this northern section is still pretty intense. We'll put this into motion for you, and so you'll be able to see what's happening now uh, with the storms moving again west to east now. And you can see it's, uh, it's a little running a little fast, but the idea here is a straight east movement on all of these storms. So better improvements in the Port Sanilac area and Sanilac County. No more warnings there at all. A tough go for as these storms move through uh, around I-69 to the north from Flint to Lapeer, and a good chunk, as you can see here, Lapeer County, and then a break right now in the metro area. We are going to get nasty weather in Detroit, in Pontiac, in Brighton, in Mount Clemens, in Ann Arbor. It's coming, okay? So I want to let you know that that is an issue as we march along here. We'll stop this now, and we'll zoom in a little bit to show you what's happening uh, in our region here, and we'll look at the areas off to the west now. This is going to be a storm that comes through pretty fast, and then all of a sudden slows around. That's what we've seen so far. Uh, Chris, if you can take, there we go. Thank you. There's Lapeer County. Uh, there's Lapeer back to Flint, Genesee County, Lapeer County. Warnings here for another uh, good uh, 25 to 30 minutes or so. We'll stop it for you there and you can see what's going on. So here is I-69. There's the Flint area, of course, uh, off to the west of that and the movement is through that area. You should be looking at winds that could be as high as 60, perhaps 70 miles an hour. Hail that could be an inch or large around that. The hail, Chris, I haven't seen a lot of reports of that here. No. We, okay, he hasn't either, which is good. We're seeing the same thing, which is nice. Uh, but back to the west, there uh, has been a history of storm in the earlier batch that came through. We're going to just kind of drag this along now and show you what's going on in Livingston County, uh, back over here to the Lansing area now. Uh, there is Howell Fowlgrove right in the thick of it right now. Uh, Chris, if you'd go back and throw my lightning on for me, I'd appreciate that right there, because this storm was really blooming. There you go. So out here uh, around Ingham to Lansing, uh, Mason's in there as well, of course. When we see these storms intensify, often you get more lightning uh, as we go along here, so it's a tough go there too. We'll put this into motion for you and show you the motion that's coming into the western part of Livingston County. The whole county will be filled with showers and thunderstorms before too long here. We don't have a warning yet, but you should still be taking coverage in this area because there's likely to be gusty winds and perhaps some larger hail. There's Argentine uh, through Howell here uh, down to Pinckney. That's kind of the leading edge of it on the uh, east side here, and it's moving from west to east. So a tough go in a lot of spots now, just starting to see more of this motion moving into the western part of the metro area here. Nothing in Detroit just yet. We'll zoom out and show you that as we march along here and see what's going on around the region. The tornado watch again till 3 a.m. is the entire red area here. Uh, Chris, if you could do me one more favor and take the lightning off, I appreciate it. <laughs> Catch a run ragged. He's investigating individual storms while we look at this whole picture here. But again, a tough go from uh, Livingston County back to Battle Creek, Kalamazoo area as well, all moving from west to east. And then earlier up to the north, uh, we had the issues uh, with sections of Lapeer County, Salinac County, uh, also to the west in Shiawassee County with tornado warnings. Um, there are no tornado warnings in the area right now. Uh, it's still a tough go though up to the north. We'll zoom in that area and show you what's going on here. So uh, there's Worth, there's Port Huron. It's all on the north and the extreme northern section of St. Clair County, but the movement again from Lapeer toward Port Huron west to east. North Branch, you're starting to get out of it now. Uh, still warning for a good chunk of Lapeer County here and until about 11.25 or 11.30 or so. So tough action on the north side and in the metro area as well. Uh, I'm going to do a couple things here, Chris, and we'll let you uh, take a peek at a couple of individual storms. I'm going to back this out a little bit if we can and see what's going on around the whole region again here. Uh, but we're looking at the north side, the most active first, just because of the orientation from southwest to northeast of the line. And then now the southwest part of this line is really starting to get more active uh, from Livingston County back to the southwest. Again, a tornado watch for everybody till 3 o'clock. Uh, we have very strong evidence of at least a couple storms that were tornadic up in Lapeer and San Juan County. Chris? All right, yeah, let's uh, take a look at those northern storms. If we could switch to weather two, please, in the control room, that would be great. Uh, looking at these storms, and the first thing I want to do is take off for you the radar information. If you see the parts of the county, it is Genesee County uh, until 1130, basically the southeast half of the county, if you will. It does include Flint. 
And then almost all of Lapeer County until midnight is under a severe thunderstorm warning. I'll put the information back on. The radar information, you can see why. These storms are moving to the east at 30, right along I-69. Now, there have been torrential rains in this area for quite some time, so uh, we're going to start to be more and more concerned about rainfall. This is observed rain wherever you see, uh, for instance, the green. We're talking about very heavy amounts of rain that have already fallen uh, across that area, so that, that is a concern as well. Uh, but the storms, the severe thunderstorm warning, Genesee County until 11.30, Lapeer County until midnight. All right, we want to go back to uh, Carolyn Glennon now. You know before this line came in, the first part of the storm uh, had a real problem with the tornado in Portland, Michigan. That was just to the west of Lansing. Yeah, unstable there, Dave. Frightening evening in the town of Portland. Residents rattled by that tornado and sirens just hours after it touched down. Definitely a scary afternoon in Portland. It's about 30 miles northwest of the Lansing area. 7 Action News, the first Detroit television station on the scene with all of that damage. Yeah, and we have Team 7 coverage tonight starting with 7 Action News reporter Jonathan Carlson. Jonathan, what's happening out there now? Well, the rain has started here again. I want to show you this uh, RV that completely flipped over. That shows you just how powerful the storm was. Hardly anyone around here was spared. If ever there was a time tiny Portland, Michigan needed to lean on its faith, it's now. Forget that three of its longtime houses of worship are in shambles. These folks say it'll be all right. We will come back from it. Parishioners came out to see what was left. I've never seen anything like it. Clearly, these places were more than just buildings. I think we grew up here, my husband and I, and um, to just see our, you know, our past and our childhood, um, it's very devastated. I've never seen anything like it. On every corner, another scene of devastation and another story. But this woman has a chilling. But it just got really dark and it got real still and all of a sudden I was doing dishes and the tornado just went right by my kitchen window. Broke our apple tree. Went in the front yard. Broke down some trees. Tore off my neighbor's roof, which ended up in our yard. I hurried up and grabbed my daughter and ran in the bedroom. I didn't know what to do. The National Weather Service was here quick and made a declaration that surprised no one. We had a tornado touchdown in the city of Portland approximately 2.30 p.m. this afternoon. Uh, the tornado was on the ground approximately 10 minutes. Confirming when nature strikes, there's no telling what fury it may bring upon you. And the city manager here has asked the governor's office for a disaster declaration. The good news in all of this, no one was seriously hurt. We're live in Portland, Michigan. I'm Jonathan Carlson, 7 Action News. All right, Jonathan, and we do want to let our viewers know that our chief meteorologist, Dave Rickstock, just told us in Millington, that uh, eastern Shiawassee County, a house has been destroyed. He told us when they first came on the air doing this tornado coverage, they were trying to determine and to confirm whether that was a tornado, and apparently it Apparently, it did touch down. We do want to continue now with our Team 7 coverage in Portland uh, with 7 Action News reporter Jane Park. Jane, what do you know? Here at the corner of Kearney and James in one of Portland's residential areas, this is just one of the many incredible images after this tornado ripped through that camper knocked down into the ditch. Luckily, the owners are okay. And even in the dark, residents are wasting no time in cleaning up. You can hear the distant buzz of the chainsaws. They just want to find some sense of normalcy. As dust settles on a muggy night, the people of Portland waste no time cleaning up what they can. But it's hard not to just stare at the devastating images. Houses and garages collapsed, roofs torn off, campers toppled. Mindy Beavers rushed home from work after her daughter called. It happened so fast. She said it happened so fast. I've been devastated for like five hours. I can't even fathom, you know, all the craziness. And just a block away, Kitty Keeper says her grandparents' garage collapsed. The cars inside miraculously remained intact. Everything's gone from inside of it. And the tornado's wrath left its mark throughout the neighborhood, leaving trees uprooted, branches splintered, and shingles strewn everywhere. At the nearby Parkview estate,